Welcome back. This is uh, my sixth and final transporter tutorial. It's going to be covering effects number five and six. This is effect number five. I have my cup kind of come in. There's these little ripples that happen and my cup teleports all the way in. To do that, we're going to make a new composition. It's composition, new composition, and we're going to name it ripples. Uh, we're going to take our cup cutout that we made in our first, I uh, showed you how to make in the first tutorial, and we're going to add the stencil alpha to it again. Remember that just reverses the whole map. Next thing we're going to do is make a new layer, new solid layer, and we're going to add the effects wave world to it, the simulation wave world. So this is kind of show you, this it seems like it's going to, could be a very powerful program if one was to uh, kind of delve into how it works. You can see it acts like something's being dropped in the center and then it creates waves that come out of that. It's kind of a neat effect. So we have our wave world on here. The only thing that we're actually um, animating is our uh, transparency level right here. And also you notice I brought the actual um, layer and I shrunk it down just grabbing the, the ends of it. And we'll turn off our cup. So all this gray color here means that it's uh, this layer is pretty much transparent. It's not completely transparent. Um, so you can see here, you can still kind of see it. And that adds kind of a nice little uh, fading effect to it. First thing we want to do is we want to change it from our wireframe, which is like that, to our height map, like that. Then we go into height map controls. Brightness to 0.5, contrast to 0.25, gamma adjustment to 1. And we set the render dry areas as transparent, and that allows you with this effect. If you just set to solid, then you just get that. That's not what we want. At 0 seconds, we set a keyframe at 1 for our transparency. As we move along to uh, 29 frames, we set another keyframe to 0 0.050. That basically makes this not transparent anymore. And then at one second, 19 frames, we set our, transparent, our transparency back up to one. The next thing we animate on this is our opacity. So at 120, we set our opacity to 100. And then six frames later, we set our opacity to zero. And this allows us in this transition point, you can still see a little bit of the waves being generated. There's just a little bit of a movement there, which I think is kind of nice. Put our cup back on. So next thing we do is we want our table with our stuff on it. So this table has our uh, remote control right there. We make a mask layer on it. Or I'm sorry, it has our, uh, it does have our remote control there. So we make a mask layer around where our cup is and we tell it just to add there. And then what we want to do is we want to animate the opacity on it. I'm just hitting the T key to bring up the opacity. At 29 frames when our wave is at its uh, least transparent, we start we set a keyframe for our opacity and then by 119 we set a, another keyframe we set our opacity to 100 that allows you to see just a little bit of the wave effect still right there and then it fades off and that's that effect so let's go on to our sixth effect effect this effect here is uh, fairly simple and i did it to kind of show you that you don't have to get really complicated with these effects um, there you go. So this is simply just the flare effect. I made a black solid lens flare that's under effects, generate um, lens flare right there. And I just control the lens brightness. So at zero, at, uh, zero seconds, I set the brightness to zero and I set a keyframe for that. Also the little stopwatch right there. At 14 frames, I set it to 100. And at 29 frames, I set it to zero. And that's pretty much it. You could change these around a little bit and that just gives you a different kind of flare. 
I like that flare the best myself. The next thing I do is I animate the opacity of this layer here. This actually brings my uh, remote control into focus. So at 14, when this flare is the brightest, I set a keyframe for my opacity at zero and hit the stopwatch. And then when my flare is completely gone, I set my opacity to 100 and set a keyframe for it. This layer here, all it's doing is um, it's just adding a little bit of uh, of the of another table. It's kind of hard to see, but anyway, it just kind of evens out some of these lines a little bit. It makes it a little less obvious that something's there. Like if you did this, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The the color changes kind of drastically if I don't have it there. It just makes it so it matches up everything a little bit. And then this, is, of course, is my base layer. So a couple little things. Um, one thing when you're trying to sync up your uh, footage, I found it's easy if you take one of your original cutouts that you made your footage with. So remember, um, remember our effect right here, our Transporter 3 effect with the sparkles. Um, what I did is I got to the very end of it. I turned this layer on. I set the opacity to 50%. And I'm just trying to adjust everything to where it gets as exact as I can. So everything matches up. Remember, you don't want any jarring motion when you're doing this. So then I just play with this layer. This is our original footage. I just play with it until it gets pretty close to where everything looks like it's matched up. And then I can just move my actual layer where I need it to be. Um, you, when you're going through this, you want to be very um, conscious of any shadows, any other little kind of funny effects that are happening. One funny effect that I had happening, and I don't know if you noticed it during the actual tutorials, is that I have, um, if you watch that picture frame up there, Oh, see, that's my head. So every time I was out of frame, every time I was out of frame, I'm actually hiding over here. I didn't realize that that mirror was there, and it got my head shot quite a few times. So that's kind of one thing that you want to try to get out of the out of the picture, as you can kind of see it becomes kind of jarring when you watch it over and over again. So all I did is I just made a little mask layer, mask that out to. Uh, a different shot of the mirror where, without my head, um, but just make sure you're kind of you kind of pay attention to uh, the things that are happening in your scene, so that you don't have anything that moves too quickly um, or looks a little bit too jarring. So uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorials and um, happy cloning. I'd or happy uh, happy transporting. I'd like to see the effects you guys make. Thanks a lot. Bye.